For as long as we've been looking up, we've been trying to make sense of the universe. We built models, ran simulations, and told ourselves that the rules we wrote down could explain everything we saw. But what happens when the universe starts breaking those rules right in front of us? That is exactly what is happening now. The James Webb Space Telescope, the most powerful window into the cosmos ever created, has begun to return not just beautiful images, but unsettling truths. These aren't just small adjustments to our understanding, they are fundamental shocks. Things that shouldn't exist are appearing in Webb's data. Stars too far away to see are suddenly shining in our instruments. Entire moons in our own solar system are revealing the ingredients for life in places we never thought to look. Exoplanets that once looked like perfect Earth-like havens are turning out to be barren and dead. And colossal cosmic structures are showing up in the very young universe, complete with black holes so massive they shouldn't have had time to form. What Webb is revealing forces us to confront the possibility that we've been wrong about the universe's timeline, wrong about how stars and planets are born, wrong even about the shape and scale of the cosmos itself. What you're about to hear is not science fiction. It's the reality captured by a $10 billion telescope sitting a million miles from Earth. And if these discoveries are correct, they mean the laws of physics as we know them are not just incomplete. They might need to be rewritten from scratch. At a distance of more than 28 billion light years from a time when the universe was barely 900 million years old, shines Arendelle, the farthest star ever observed by humanity. Its very detection is a miracle of physics and technology, made possible by a rare alignment of galaxies that acted as a gravitational lens, bending and magnifying its light by a factor of over 4,000. Without this cosmic coincidence, even Webb's incredible sensitivity wouldn't have been enough to see it. But what Webb found when it studied Arendelle was even stranger. This is not a population three star. The first, pristine stars made purely of hydrogen and helium that should have dominated that early era. Instead, Arendelle contains heavier elements, meaning that by the time it formed, other stars had already lived and died, enriching the universe with metals. That completely disrupts our understanding of the timeline for the first generations of stars. In theory, we should still be searching for the very first ones, but the fact that Arendelle already has heavy elements means those earlier stars were born, burned bright, and vanished far sooner than we imagined. It's also enormous, a blazing blue B-type giant, burning at 16,000 Kelvin and shining millions of times brighter than the sun. And yet, against all odds, it has traveled through time and space to be visible to us now. The question that haunts astronomers is, if we can see Arendelle, why can't we see the truly ancient stars that came before it? Have they been hidden from us, destroyed, or were they never there in the way we expected? Every answer seems to challenge the models we've trusted for decades. Webb's revelations aren't all in the distant universe. One of its most surprising and potentially history-changing discoveries is right here in our cosmic backyard. Saturn's icy moon Enceladus has long been known to shoot plumes of water vapor from cracks in its frozen surface. But when Webb turned its infrared eye toward those geysers, it detected something extraordinary. Inside those icy plumes are not just water and ice, but the six chemical elements essential for life as we know it. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Even more astonishing, Webb detected phosphates molecules critical to the structure of DNA and essential for energy transfer in cells. This means that beneath Enceladus's ice crust lies an ocean that not only has liquid water, but the exact chemical cocktail that life on Earth needs to exist. This finding has completely reshaped NASA's priorities. Plans are already being accelerated for a robotic mission capable of landing, melting through the ice, and sending probes into that hidden ocean. It's a stunning reversal. Mars has dominated the search for life for decades, but now a frozen moon hundreds of millions of kilometers away might be the most likely place to find alien biology. And unlike distant exoplanets, we could actually go there and test it within our lifetime. The implications are staggering. If life exists in the ocean of Enceladus, it would mean that life can emerge in multiple places in a single solar system. And if that's true here, it might be happening everywhere. If Enceladus has become the new frontier for hope, Trappist-1 has become the cautionary tale. 
When this star system was discovered, with seven rocky planets similar in size to Earth, three of them in the so-called habitable zone, it sparked dreams of a mini-solar system teeming with life. Scientists imagined worlds with oceans, clouds, and alien skies. But now Webb's instruments have delivered a sobering dose of reality. Detailed observations of the two innermost planets have revealed that they have no substantial atmospheres. Without an atmosphere, there's no protection from the intense radiation of their star, no way to retain liquid water, and no chance of complex life on the surface. Instead of lush alien worlds, these are dead rocks, one face scorched under eternal daylight, the other frozen in endless night. The planet Trappist 1c, once considered a prime candidate for habitability, has been just as disappointing. Webb found no sign of an atmosphere there either. The crushing disappointment isn't just about these specific planets, it's about what they represent. If even the most promising Earth-sized planets in a habitable zone can turn out to be lifeless, then perhaps truly Earth-like worlds are far rarer than we hoped. And if that's true, our place in the cosmos might be even more unique than we've ever dared to believe. Far beyond any single star or planet, Webb has given us our clearest view yet of the universe's hidden architecture, the cosmic web. In one deep field observation, Webb captured a filament more than three million light years long, connecting 10 galaxies in a vast, delicate thread. This structure, predicted for decades in simulations, has never been seen so clearly before. But within this colossal strand of the universe, Webb uncovered a discovery that has shaken astrophysics to its core, a supermassive black hole with over 9 million times the mass of the Sun, existing just 830 million years after the Big Bang. According to every model we have, there simply wasn't enough time for a black hole of that size to form. They're supposed to start small, growing over billions of years as they consume matter and merge with others. Yet here is one, already fully grown in cosmic infancy, breaking the speed limits we thought governed the universe's evolution. The existence of this black hole forces astronomers to consider possibilities they've long resisted, that black holes might form through entirely different processes than we believe, that they might be born massive, or even that our understanding of time and growth in the early universe is fundamentally flawed. One of James Webb's most ambitious goals was to probe the atmospheres of distant exoplanets to read their chemical signatures like fingerprints and search for clues of habitability or even life. And in planets such as WASP 39b and K218b, Webb has detected a cocktail of molecules that has left scientists both fascinated and puzzled. There's confirmed carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, hydrogen sulfide, and other complex organic molecules. At first glance, this sounds like a tantalizing hint at exotic, life-friendly environments. But the numbers don't add up. In some of these worlds, methane levels are drastically lower than geological models predict, while in others they are inexplicably high. These aren't small deviations. They're so extreme that no known non-biological process can fully explain them. And that has forced researchers to confront an uncomfortable possibility. Perhaps something is actively altering these atmospheres. No one is declaring life outright, but the data is hard to dismiss. In science, chemical disequilibrium is often a flag for biological activity. On Earth, it's exactly what our atmosphere shows because life constantly reshapes it. If something similar is happening light years away, then Webb may have just given us the first indirect glimpse of alien metabolism. Or it could mean there are planetary processes at work that we've never encountered before, ones that will require a total rethinking of atmospheric science. Either way, these signals are a message. We are missing a piece of the puzzle. When Webb began scanning galaxies from the universe's first billion years, scientists expected to find chaos, small, irregular clumps of stars crashing into each other, merging into unstable shapes. Instead, what emerged from the data was something unsettling, order. There were spiral galaxies with defined arms, massive elliptical giants, and intricate gravitational interactions, appearing far earlier than our models allow. Large-scale structures were already in place at an age when the cosmos should still have been a violent, unorganized mess. Some clusters were gravitationally bound in ways that suggest precision, as if the universe had a head start in shaping itself. This raises a dangerous question. If the universe could self-organize so quickly, 
Is it following a hidden blueprint? Some astrophysicists are now daring to suggest that the standard Big Bang expansion timeline may be wrong, or at least incomplete. Others whisper about a deeper set of laws guiding cosmic architecture, an organizing principle embedded in the very fabric of space-time. The early universe, it seems, wasn't just expanding. It was arranging itself with an elegance that feels almost intentional. There's something else in Webb's data that's quietly making cosmologists nervous. The telescope is detecting more infrared light from deep space than predicted, so much more that it suggests we may be seeing objects that should be beyond the cosmic horizon. According to the physics of an expanding universe, there's a limit to how far we can see. But Webb keeps pushing that limit back, capturing signals from sources that, by current theory, shouldn't be observable at all. If these readings hold up, they could mean several things, none of them simple. One possibility is that the expansion of the universe is slowing down more than we thought. Another, even more radical, is that the universe has already passed its maximum size and is beginning to contract, a reversal that would rewrite cosmology from top to bottom. There's also the provocative idea that our understanding of light's journey through space is flawed and that we've been misreading the edge of the observable universe entirely. In all cases, the message is the same. The cosmos is not behaving like the neat, predictable system we've been teaching for decades. Among all the shocking discoveries, there's a subtler, more profound effect Webb is having. One that isn't about physics or chemistry, but about perspective. Every time we see another perfectly resolved galaxy from the cosmic dawn, or a distant world with a suspiciously complex atmosphere, we're reminded of our own smallness and of the fragility of our assumptions. These images aren't just snapshots of space, they are mirrors. They reflect how far we've come as a species and how much we still don't understand. They challenge the arrogance with which we declare that our models are complete. They expose the gaps in our knowledge and force us to admit that the universe is under no obligation to conform to our expectations. And perhaps that's the real breakthrough. The Webb telescope is not just showing us what's out there, it's making us face the truth that every answer will raise a hundred more questions. In that sense, Webb is less a window to the universe than a reminder that we are, in many ways, still standing at the doorway, just beginning to step into the unknown. The James Webb Space Telescope was built to refine our understanding of the cosmos, to give us clearer images, better data, sharper answers. Instead, it has done the opposite. It has opened cracks in our most trusted theories, forced us to question the timeline of the universe, and placed strange, impossible facts right in front of our eyes. Stars that shouldn't exist, moons with the chemistry for life in our own backyard, exoplanets with atmospheric signatures we can't explain, galaxies and black holes forming long before they were allowed to, and a universe that, instead of being random and chaotic, appears to have been organized and structured almost from the very beginning. These discoveries don't just break the laws of physics. They remind us that those laws were written by humans based on the limits of what we could see at the time. Now Webb is showing us further than we've ever seen, and the deeper we look, the more those laws bend, stretch, and in some cases, shatter completely. Maybe our understanding of cosmic history is only a small chapter in a much larger story. Maybe the universe has cycles we've never witnessed, rules we've never imagined, and purposes we're not yet capable of comprehending. And perhaps the most important truth Webb has revealed is this. The universe doesn't owe us simplicity. It doesn't exist to make sense to us. It will continue to surprise us, confuse us, and humble us, as long as we dare to look deeper. So I leave you with the question that now hangs over every image, every spectrum, every data point Webb sends back. Are we witnessing the start of a new era in science? or the beginning of a revelation so vast that it will redefine humanity's place in the cosmos forever. If this journey into the unknown has shaken you as much as it has shaken the scientific world, tell us your thoughts in the comments. Hit like, subscribe for more deep space discoveries, and share this video with someone who still believes the universe is just empty darkness. Because thanks to Webb, we now know, the darkness is full of surprises.